Why would you debate people when you have a 55, 60, 62 point lead? You want a smart president, right? I think if I did that, I'd say, we didn't know he was so stupid. Okay, we are one day away from the third Republican presidential debate. And once again, the 45th president, Donald Trump, current frontrunner by a mile, by the way, is not going to be there. It will be a much smaller field on that stage in the last two debates. Chris Christie, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Tim Scott will be on the stage in Miami tomorrow night. Doug Burgum, Asa Hutchinson did not make the cut. Van Jones back with us. CNN political commentator Alice Stewart joins the table along with the writer of Very Serious Newsletter and podcast host Josh Barrow. So that's what the stage is going to look like tomorrow night. The question is, does it make any difference whatsoever, Alice? Does anyone break through? It doesn't seem to be moving the needle in terms of anyone inching up on Donald Trump. Clearly, one indictment after another after another is not impacting the base with Donald Trump. But I think what's important is someone really needs to break away from the pack. I think Nikki Haley has done a really good job of slow and steady inching her way up, making a good case on the debate stage that she is strong on foreign policy. She has uh, a good instinct in terms of uh, what works with the voters. I think Ron DeSantis has made a good message for time for a generational change, someone who can actually win in a general election. And you got to love Chris Christie. His motivation and his mission is to just punch Donald Trump every opportunity he gets. So that's what I expect we're going to see on the debate stage. And look, the goal right now is to show a contrast with the fellow people on the stage, take the message to Donald Trump, and ultimately make the case, the general election case, that you're the person that can take on Joe Biden in next November. <laughs> Sorry. He's speechless. No, that, no, 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 that was actually, like, that was really, really great advice. I think the question becomes, you know, the general election case, well, Trump is going to say, well, look at the New York Times poll from 36 hours ago and also look at my polls in the primary. And I'm not dismissing debates. I actually, I think they're interesting. And Nikki Haley has clearly been buoyed to some degree. But I think what I'm most fascinated by right now, Van, is the reality of the head-to-head -head between the guy who's leading that race mm -hmm. and the current president of the United States. And one year out with the severe issues that the president has with the coalitions that made him president in 2020, mm -hmm. whether you not whether you think he can actually come back from that. Well, he, right now he's, he's swimming in oatmeal, I mean, Biden. I mean, it's, it's tough because um, you look at the economy, the numbers are pointing in the right direction overall. He should be doing well with his base, pass more bills and more laws. If he were to retire right now, he'd be on Mount Rushmore in terms of what he'd be able to do. So should he? I, I, would, I would argue that it's time for him to look at that, looking at these numbers. People say, well, you know, Obama was down. Joe Biden is not Obama. I mean, Obama was still, he had, he had, he had the legs, he had the, 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 uh, the charisma. Uh, Biden is not there. And so, uh, look, you're going to watch the debate tomorrow. The debate, the debate tomorrow is really for who's going to maybe be a leader in the Republican Party in, in four years, I mean, or who's going to be the vice president. It's, it's important. These people are important. I am proud to see that there's three people of color on that stage. That's, that's a historic uh, moment mm -hmm. we should miss uh, tomorrow night. Uh, but none of these guys are going to catch Donald Trump. So you're looking at Donald Trump versus Biden, and the Biden coalition is tired, it's uninspired, uh, and people are scared. And there's no point in pretending that's not true or having people from, you know, the, the, uh, the Biden camp yell at us for, for pointing out the truth. That's the reality right now. You just said uh, what David Axelrod tweeted yet uh, on Sunday about, you know, Biden has to make this decision is the best for the country if he runs what Tim Ryan told Casey Hunt about Biden shouldn't run. And then now here's John Fetterman. Let me say something that might be uncomfortable, that right now there are two, there are two additional Democrats running for Pennsylvania, excuse me, running for president right now. One, one is a congressman from Minnesota. The other one is the governor of California. <laughs> They're both running for president, but only one had the guts to announce it. <laughs> I mean, it, it's too late to have an open contest for the Democratic nomination. The filing deadline's already passed in Nevada and New Hampshire. It's coming up in literally weeks in many states. I mean, the only person who stood up a campaign is Dean Phillips, as, as John Fetterman points out there. I mean, except for, you know, the, you, I, we count Marion Williamson. Um, and so the, unless you're going to try to elect Dean Phillips as the Democratic nominee, which I, you know, 
Uh, Dean Phillips didn't even really seem to want to be here. He's basically been spending months trying to convince somebody else to run. And he's like, well, if nobody else is going to do it, I'll do it. But the problem is that, you know, this is a conversation the Democratic Party, if it was going to have it, needed to have a year ago when there was a time for other people to stand up campaigns. Right now, you literally can't get on the ballot in some of these states. If Biden withdrew tomorrow, I suppose Kamala Harris would become the front runner for the nomination. And with the exception of these New York Times polls that came out this week that everyone's so freaked out about, it's the only poll I can find this election cycle that has Kamala running better than Biden in a general election against Donald Trump. There have been dozens of polls showing that she's an even worse candidate than, than Joe Biden to face Donald Trump. So basically, Democrats are, you know, th th this is where the party is stuck. And Biden needs to find a way to message his, his accomplishments better to reach voters who are less engaged. Biden's holding up pretty well with, for example, black and Hispanic voters who voted in the midterm elections. He hasn't had a lot of deterioration. The deterioration comes across all sorts of demographic groups with younger voters and with voters who are less engaged, who did not turn out in the midterms. He's going to need some of those people to turn out in 2024. I mean, one thing, Reid Hoffman uh, has, his, uh, has a research group for Democrats with some interesting research out this week. One thing is almost no voters are, are aware that U.S. oil and gas production is at a record right now. Right. Um, they're very aware that the president tried to cancel student loan debt. They hear him talk a lot about jobs. One key accomplishment the president has on cost of living, he doesn't talk about at all. That's one thing he could talk about, but, you know, he needs more than that. Well, the problem with this recent uh, New York Times Siena poll is that everyone likes to talk about polls or snapshots in time. This is a highlight on a trend of downward spiral for, for Joe Biden. His numbers, he has gone from ahead of Trump to head to head with Trump. Now he's behind in these key five states. And when you have key Democrats, obviously Van Jones and the laundry list of people, you said that this is a, a serious concern. Sidney Blumenthal as well, saying that he needs to take a serious look at what he's doing. Joe Biden needs to look at what does his legacy need to be? Does he want to be the person that beat Donald Trump? Or does he want to be the president that overstayed his welcome and potentially lost to Donald Trump? And because what he's doing is he is losing key voters, the black and youth vote, they're frustrated with him, A, on the, the fact that the student loan debt did not come forward. They're frustrated with his position on Israel. American people feel, 74% of American people feel they are worse off economically under his, uh, his actions. And Bidenomics, he's out there selling Bidenomics, and people aren't buying it. They're earning earning less, they're, they're paying more, and they, they just don't have confidence in his state of the economy. And if I were a Democrat, I would be looking elsewhere. Democrat? Well, uh, on that happy note. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I, 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 think, I think people are, are, are nervous. People are nervous. And I think people keep telling those of us who are nervous that, you know, we're bedwetters, et cetera. I say, well, you know, invest in Pampers, uh, invest in Depends. <laughs> uh, we're still nervous. Nothing has changed. And, you know, they say, well, you know, you beat them before. Listen, if that were good logic, the same team would win the Super Bowl every year. That's not the right logic. The question is, Bi Biden was the right answer for uh, coming out of four years of crazy with Donald Trump because the hope was he was going to end the crazy. The reality is he's done a great job, but the crazy is crazier than ever. And so that doesn't mean that the same guy that was good for you four years ago is where you want to go next. Uh, I agree that it might be a little bit too late. Some of us have been raising concerns earlier. Uh, I, I, look, we have the right to be concerned and nervous for our party, and we are right now. They see the polls, and they know, <laughs> trust me, they know. They, just as Joe Biden will be the Democratic nominee and is running for president, and Gavin Newsom is not, they also know the polls. They think they've got a year to fix it. Alice, Fan, Josh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And CNN News Central starts after.